Welcome, pickers, grinners, lovers, sinners, uh, all my guitar playing friends. Um, real quick lesson on embellishments and the embellishments I like to use mostly in my leading lead playing. Uh, we'll also go over some rhythmic embellishments, but um, I'm you know not going to give a whole lot of playing examples. But we'll go. I'll do a different video on each one of these. But I kind of want to do a brief overview and get these ideas into your head because you know this is like the spice in cooking, right? So. It's not like it's real hard to learn any of these things, but using them changes your playing to such a huge degree. It's what makes your playing interest. It goes from boring to interesting when you start to really embrace all these uh, embellishment ideas. So, um, you know, it's like I said, I think the best analogy is handing someone a steak that y you just cooked or one that you seasoned and marinated. And it's, I mean, it's just, it, it's, you know, it's not like this huge hard thing to do, but it made the it made it taste so much better, right? We're in the same territory here, so let's get right into it. Um, first technique: bends. Okay, there's lots of bends you could do, unison bends. You could just regular bends, or you can really shake it. You could do that vibrato thing when you get up there, pre-bend it. So bend it first and come down with it. I mean, there's all these different ways to do bends. So um, just get to know bends and use them, abuse them. Every time I'm on the, my way to a gig, I think to myself, bend too much, bend too much, bend too much, just bend away. Because sometimes I'll forget to do it in like improvising and then later I'll be like, I didn't even like hit any awesome bends tonight or whatever. And you know, I came to realize like when I'm listening to my favorite guitar players, it's not like they do it. They do it once in a solo and go, oh, I can't do that trick again, right? I mean, they will do it all over the place, and it's beautiful, and it's, I love it. One of the coolest tricks you can use and abuse. Um, Hammer-ons and pull-offs, kind of the same territory. You can use these a bunch. So you got hammer-on, pull-off, right? And you don't, or you can. I mean, there's all sorts of different. You can slide into them, so you can do slides as well. You can slide long slides overshoot it it's kind of cool that's kind of cool you can do like approach note slides you know shit like that stuff like that oh i swore uh oh um <laughs> um so yeah um those are some techniques i definitely really love like let me get out my cheat sheet here um because I had a, uh, some stuff, I don't want to miss any of these. Um, so next, let's let's talk about double stops, which um, you know I think is a really cool way to make your lead playing have a little bit more like chordal vibe in it. So just really, you know, you can ex even extend that to triads and, you know, other chordal stuff, but it'll make your, it'll break up your lead playing to sound like you've got some, uh, mixing in some chordal stuff into it. And it's really neat. Um, we talked about the slides already, so I won't harp more on that. Um, then we have like palm muting. Um, so right hand techniques. Okay. Ghost notes. So when you're playing the funk, you know, you got the... And those ghost notes, those are what you're holding with your left hand. That's just as important as how you're doing it with your right hand. Um, Corey Wong does this lesson where he shows how if you don't mute it properly with this hand, you're just playing. Not very cool, right? But if you do it right with this hand, you go. Right? So it's all about the control of your left hand, right, on that. Not as much your right hand, even though that seems counterintuitive. Um, so um, just using those ghost notes, and same with your when you're soloing. Those ghost notes are really cool when you're when you're doing solos. Um, don't forget patterns too. Um, so practice your scales. Like here's in threes. Or in fours.
you know, so practice it with the different number patterns, with different scales. You know, uh, it, it, this is a really cool trick. When you're improvising, sometimes when you do some of that pattern type stuff, you won't believe how much cooler it sounds than when you're just practicing it on your own. It doesn't sound like it's anything special. But then you mix it into an uh, improv improvisational moment and it really does kind of build and, and release tension in a really cool way. So, um, I don't know, those are just some real quick um, embellishments and ideas and things you can just incorporate into your playing like tomorrow that'll make it cooler that you don't really have to practice much, you just have to think about it and then maybe work on it and refine it. Oh, vibrato, we didn't go over your vibrato. <laughs> Work on your vibrato. Um, the list is endless. There's more embellishments I'm missing here. This is a, just a quick video on it. I'm going to break each em embellishment up and do like a long video on them all so we can really go down the rabbit hole. But um, I hope that helps in just thinking about them and, and incorporating them more into your playing. Um, much love to you guys. Like, subscribe, share, um, and I will see you soon. Keep on picking, people. Later.